Hi everyone, Happy New Year, and welcome back to another Sunday video. Are vaccine booster mandates, particularly for young adults, medically unethical? Today I'm going to break down and highlight some of the key points of a peer-reviewed study published in the BMJ Journal of Medical Ethics, which re-evaluates the risk-benefit and ethical analysis of mandate policies at universities. Although the study focused on young people in universities, similar populations are also affected in workplaces with such mandates. So, let's take a look. The main argument for the mandate is to reduce harm. Now, since mandates take away individual choices, so the goal is to reduce harm in the community or to prevent transmitting the disease to others. But the effectiveness against transmission is not without controversials among experts. Studies published during the Delta variant and early Omicron wave both showed that when vaccinated and or booster people are infected, their viral loads were similar to those who did not receive the vaccine, or the groups can spread the virus in a household setting. Even CDC has a statement saying anyone with Omicron infection, regardless of vaccination status or whether or not they have symptoms, can spread the virus to others. The newer Omicron subvariants, such as the XBB, are even more transmissible, so the current vaccine cannot fully attain the goal of reducing harm in the community. According to the CDC's own study, this is still true for the bivalent booster because they are only modest in preventing infection in short term. So mandating to reduce harm in the community was not entirely accurate in 2022. Another big argument for mandating is to end the pandemic. Dr. Fauci was a big proponent of vaccine mandates to end the pandemic, back in 2021. In order to eliminate the virus completely in humans, we need a vaccine to offer complete protection without animal reservoirs. Unfortunately, a paper from late 2021 already showed that wild white-tailed deer that live across North, Central, and South America had had extensive SARS-CoV-2 infection. So even vaccinating every human on the planet, the virus may still have a chance to spill back from animal to human. Again, the idea of mandating to end the pandemic is not accurate anymore. So mandating does not appear to benefit the public significantly. The current vaccine platform is still more of a personal vaccine. Then the question becomes, is there a tangible personal benefit to boost again and again for the younger population? Or is the harm or risk of multiple booster remain very low, like the CDC says? Many reports claims cardiac complications such as myocarditis and pericarditis are more common after COVID-19 infection than vaccination. But according to the authors of this main article, these reviews have not framed vaccine-associated risk versus infection-associated risk using compatible denominators based on exposure and infection. In other words, they means it is not a complete analysis to only compare infection-induced myocarditis and vaccine-induced myocarditis, mainly because the boosters are designed to lower hospitalization rate further. So the research team reanalyzed the data presented at the CDC ACIP meeting that they directly compared the hospitalization prevention or the benefit and different risks, including serious adverse events, grade 3 or higher reactogenicity, and myocarditis or pericarditis. Now, these were CDC and vaccine manufacturers' data on people less than 30 years old after receiving the third dose. The first figure here showed that for every 1 million young adults receiving a Pfizer booster, 32 COVID hospitalizations would be prevented. But at the same time, based on the Pfizer booster human clinical trials data, 
one million doses would result in about 593 cases of serious adverse events in people less than 30 years old. Similarly, after reanalyzing Moderna data to prevent 23 cases of hospitalization with the Moderna booster, it would result in more than 100,000 cases of grade three or higher reactogenicity events. This number would even be higher in COVID recovered people receiving the booster. Again, based on CDC's own data, for every one million doses. There are more myocarditis and pericarditis in male 18 to 29 than the number of COVID hospitalization would have been prevented with the booster in this group of people. So what it means is that even the risk of myocarditis or pericarditis is lower from vaccination than from infection. The third graph here showed that the benefits of preventing COVID hospitalization. Are less than the overall risk in male 18 to 29. This paper is actually quite long, and to sum up, they reanalyzed age and gender stratified risk benefit of the third dose in people less than 30 years old. And I've only highlighted some of the key finding they presented in the paper. And I highly recommend everyone to read this article. This article language is actually not as technical as other language. This is more of an ethic paper, and they present both for and against arguments. So it's a very well-rounded article. And doesn't matter if you are for or against this mandate policy. This article will widen your perspective on the disease and the vaccine. Now the current debate is the new bivalent booster and possibly the fourth dose for everyone. On December 30th, the CDC just published a new analysis with a very simplified message, stating that an updated booster may reduce your risk of severe COVID-19 by 50% or more in immunocompetent adult 18 and above, and everyone who is eligible should get it. However, if you read into the article, the study also admits that they did not account for previous COVID infections or the existence of natural immunity. In addition, some people in the study may have also taken Paxlovid to reduce urgent care visits and hospitalization. And the analysis also did not separately analyze the bivalent vaccine effectiveness against the number of previous monovalent vaccine doses received. They lumped all these one dose, two dose, three dose, four dose of monovalent vaccine together, and do the analysis. But the fatal omission in this analysis, in my opinion, are that they again did not adjust for comorbidities. And provide age stratified bivalent booster effectiveness against urgent care visits and hospitalization. Now, perhaps the risk is low, but when the benefit is also low, is it still ethical to push a specific medical intervention? Let's think about it. To wrap up, I need to emphasize that this video is not. Intended to discourage people from getting their boosters, but to provide extra information for people who are confused about many messages put out by the officials. One thing I didn't cover too much in this video is the harm of mandate. I personally know people who lost their jobs due to refusing the mandate policy at my workplace. A recent study published in Nature also showed that people who chose not to get vaccinated faced discrimination and prejudice over the past few years. These are the harms the society has done to people who chose not to receive the vaccine. As we move forward beyond what most of us consider the acute phase of the pandemic and try to live a normal life. It is also important for us to recognize and respect individual medical decision rights, and not to be judgmental of people's individual choices. I know this is a very heavy topic to start the new year, and I promise we will have much more interesting health topic videos in 2023. 
And in fact, I've also started an Instagram account to document my journey of losing more weight or more belly fat in 2023. So I'll keep you guys posted soon. Now that's all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, eat healthy and stay healthy. I hope to see you again next Sunday. Please take care. Bye.